In today's video, I show you the MR anatomy of the spring ligament complex. The spring ligament can be quite a difficult structure to assess, especially if you're new, if you're a beginner, a resident, or even if you're not so experienced with the MSK radiology. So in this video, I show you how you can find the different components of the spring ligament complex easily and how you can identify them and give them a very good name and especially how to remember the names. This is part 4 of my ankle ligament series and if you want to see all the other videos about the other ankle ligaments just make sure to watch the videos here, you'll find the links there and I will do a series with injuries of all these ligaments so make sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit the notification button because then you get automatically notified by email every time I upload a new video and this is typically once a week, typically on Wednesdays, depending on my schedule. So we are already one minute in and I haven't told you anything interesting yet. Good job, Chris. So let's start off with the anatomic landmarks here, the bony landmarks. First of all, we have the sustentaculum tally, which is this structure here, very important, then probably even more important for the identification of all these ligaments, especially the smaller ones, is the coronoid fossa, which is this fossa here. And then we have the navicular tuberosity, which is this most middle portion of the navicular bone. And on the plantar aspect, we have the navicular beak. And basically keep these uh, bony landmarks in your mind when we go through the different portions of the spring ligament complex. And here it is, the spring ligament complex, also known as the calcaneo navicular ligament or ligaments. Um, because it's connecting the calcaneus with the navicular, obviously. And it is composed of three different components. So we have the supramedial band here, the strongest and most important one, which is protecting the tailor head from going onto the medial side. And then we have the medial plantar oblique band, which is the green structure here. And then we have the infro plantar longitudinal band. So don't get confused with the names because the orientation and everything is not well appreciated here on a static image. We go through these ligaments on MR images and then you will also better understand the names. Just to give you the explanation and it's um, a very easy way to remember why they are called this way. Um, the nomenclature is based on the insertion onto the navicular bone. So this one here is inserting medially and superiorly onto the navicular bone, hence the supramedial band. Then we have this one here, the medial plantar oblique band. It's inserting also medially onto the navicular bone, but on the plantar aspect. That's why it's the medial plantar oblique band. And oblique because it's running obliquely if you watch a axial uh, section axial uh, meaning in this orientation and then uh, correspondingly we have the infraplantar longitudinal band it's inserting inferiorly here onto the navicular beak and on the plantar aspect hence the infraplantar longitudinal band longitudinal because it has a more longitudinal orientation along the foot so the function of the spring ligament complex here is like a hammock it holds the talus here in position and it's basically the static stabilizer of the medial arch, uh, longitudinal arch of the foot. So as long as these bands are intact, the tailor head should not uh, dive downwards and medially and uh, as you would have in an acquired flat foot deformity. And correspondingly, if it's um, damaged here, the static stabilizer and also the posterior tibial tendon is damaged, then you might get an acquired flat foot deformity. Basically the function is like a hammock, so you can imagine you have the tailor head here and it wants to hang in the spring ligament complex just like this here and then it's quite happy. I forgot to mention this earlier, basically the name spring ligament is a misnomer because initially people thought that the spring ligament is made of some elastic fibers or has some elastic properties just like a spring coil, but it's actually not the case. So um, nevertheless, it's still called spring ligament. And with that, let's move on. This is just another view uh, of the spring ligament complex components. Again, we have here the supramedial band, which is running from the sustentaculum to the supramedial portion of the navicular bone, hence supramedial band, so very easy to name. It's the most important and the strongest one and typically the one that you should assess in every MR of the ankle. The other ones are less important. And here you can see why this one is called the medial plantar oblique band. 
Um, by the way, the cuboid bone here is missing. I, I, I cut it out. And um, it's running obliquely, first of all, and is attaching medially onto the navicular bone, but on the plantar aspect. So it's the medial plantar oblique band. Then here, correspondingly, inferior, inferior plantar longitudinal band. It's running longitudinally and then attaching on the inferior plantar aspect onto the navicular beak. This is just to give you another view of the hammock here of the spring ligament complex where the talus is falling in here and quite happy there. Let's start off here with the first patient to show you the spring ligaments, uh, spring ligament components. I will start off here with the coronals because I think it's the most easiest way to identify these ligaments. So basically Remember that I have shown you in my video about the uh, deltoid ligament that there is a part of the superficial um, layer of the deltoid ligament which is called the tibiospring ligament which is basically a ligament originating from the medial malleolus and then inserting into the supramedial part of the spring ligament complex here. So basically we have this ligament here and then as soon as this ligament thickens we are at the level of the supramedial band of the spring ligament complex and here above is the posterior tibial tendon. So this is the posterior tibial tendon. Below here we have the supramedial portion of the spring ligament. And in between, it's not so well seen here, there is a gliding layer which is composed of loose connective tissue so that there is less friction between the posterior tibial tendon and the supramedial part of the spring ligament complex here. So just keep that in mind. Typically the thickness of the supramedial portion here is around 2 to 5 millimeters. There is quite a large range in the literature what's considered to be normal but I think sometimes um, they measure the connective tissue here, sometimes they don't. But if you have a structure here above 4 or at, especially if it's above 5 millimeters consider it to be not intact or not normal. So you start at the level of the joint here, ankle joint, you identify the posterior tibial tendon, you go down and then here between the posterior tibial tendon and the tailor head there we have this thick ligament here which is connecting the sustentaculum tali to the medial aspect superiorly of the navicular bone and this ligament here is the supramedial band so it's sometimes not so easy to differentiate from the overlying tendon here but you can window here a little bit and you get a nice view here on this ligament. It's less easy to see on a sagittal view but you can appreciate it here where it is connecting here from the sustentaculum tally all the way over here onto the supramedial portion of the navicular bone. Now let's move on to the other parts. So the first thing that you want to do to identify the smaller components of the spring ligament complex is to scroll down to the level of the sustentaculum tally and then you have here this corner here, this fossa here, which is called the coronoid fossa and basically here is the origin of the two smaller portions of the spring ligament complex. We have the medial plantar oblique one which is this ligament structure here, these little dots that have fat in between. Here you can see all these dots, there is some fat in between and it's running obliquely from the coronoid fossa onto the inferior or the plantar aspect medially of the, uh, of the navicular bone, hence the name. Let me show you this here in another plane. So Basically you can see here some of these fibers here on the axials. You can see these different fibers here. So this is the medial plantar oblique one and then more laterally and in a more longitudinal orientation and originating a little bit more distally here we have the infraplantar longitudinal one. So it's the shortest one of these ligaments and you can hardly appreciate it here but it's just this one fiber here this one so you can see it here so that's the way to identify these ligaments now let's just pull up another patient here you can start on your coronals you identify the 
posterior tibial tendon and the tibial spring ligament, which is this structure here. This is a very nice example. And as soon as it's getting thicker, here is the transition. This one here, let me just make this a little bit bigger. This one here is the supramedial band of the spring ligament complex. Then this is a little bit brighter structure here is the gliding layer and above we have the posterior tibial tendon. On the axials do the same thing, just identify the posterior tibial tendon, follow it down until you see this thickened structure here between the tendon and the bone. And then this is the tibial spring ligament with the gliding layer in between. This one is the gliding layer, this is the tendon, and this is the supramedial band of the spring ligament complex. If you go proximally, then you will see here fibers of the superficial layer, the tibia spring ligament of the deltoid ligament here, and this one here is the supramedial band. To identify the smaller structures, you go and check for the sustentaculum, then go a little bit more distally until you see this corner here, which is the coronoid fossa. And here are originating uh, the smaller portions and we have the medioplantar oblique one here. It's this ligament, it's a very thin one in this case, inserting here on two sections. And then we have in a more longitudinal orientation, the inferoplantar longitudinal band here, which is a little bit broader in this patient here. So you can see this V-shaped structure here, both originating from the coronoid fossa. You can also see the smaller ones on your coronals here. Just go to this corner here where we have the supramedial band. So here running from medially to laterally in this oblique orientation, we have the medial plantar oblique portion of the spring ligament complex. And in this case, this thicker ligament here, but still the shortest one is the infraplantar longitudinal one. And just to remember that it's normal to have a little recess here and if there is joint diffusion in the talonavicular joint you can have a recess here. Again we have here these two bands, this one is the longitudinal one, this one is the oblique one and in between you can have, you can have some fluid sometimes, if, especially if you have a lot of uh, fusion in the navic talonavicular joint and this recess here is called the spring ligament recess. So don't get confused and call this a tear of this hammock here because that's a normal finding. Uh, in a quick way, on a transverse section here, we have the supramedial band here between the tendon and the bone, gliding layer in between. When we go further distally, then we come here to the coronoid fossa, this corner here, and then we have the medial plantar oblique band of the spring ligament complex here, zack, zack, and then here a little bit more laterally in a more longitudinal orientation we have the infraplantar longitudinal band. So this is a very easy way to see these ligaments and you can identify them in most cases. And because it's so much fun, here again we have the supramedial band of the spring ligament complex here between the tendon and the talus. Here thickness okay, signal intensity okay, then we go further down and then we have the corner here, the coronoid fossa and we can see here the longitudinal band and here we have the oblique band with some fat tissue in between. So I hope this video was helpful to you and with this approach that you will find these different components of the spring ligament complex in the future if you're reading ankle MRIs. I have a small section about the uh, spring ligament also in my book here, which you can buy on Amazon. But uh, don't buy the book for the spring ligament. Basically, I covered most of it in my videos here, but there is a lot of information that you will not find in my videos yet. So go check it out. And also, if you want to support me on a more personal level, go check out my Patreon page. There you have different tiers that you can join. You can become a supporter of the channel and basically have influence on what content that I produce and you have quizzes uh, and you have also separate and exclusive videos that you can only find over on my Patreon page. So go check that out as well. And with that, I would like to close this session here and see you next week.